Transcendentalism, The Legacy of Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau. So, what is Transcendentalism? It was a 19th century philosophical and social movement that emphasized spirituality and individuality over empiricism and material things. There were two prominent leaders of this movement, Ralph Emerson and Henry Thoreau. Let's begin with Emerson. Why is he so important and how did he impact other authors, readers, and America? One of Emerson's first and most important works published was Nature. This book held a very radical message to the people of his time. It was a call for each person to have an original relationship with the universe. According to Emerson, nature is perfectly suitable for humans, but humans must take themselves away from society's flaws and distractions and create wholeness with nature. His other works, like Self-Reliance and his Dial Essays, inspired many writers. People like Bronson Alcott, Margaret Fuller, and Henry Thoreau took his ideas and formed their own beliefs and values and created wonderful books that are still studied today. Even later authors were inspired, like Virginia Woolf. In 1977, she said, Each man, by finding out what he feels, discovers the laws of the universe. Emerson changed the thoughts and beliefs of hundreds of writers and pushed their minds into unknown worlds. Without him, thousands of books would never have been written the way they were. In addition, Emerson loved giving lectures whenever he had the chance. Over the span of four decades, Emerson gave 1,500 lectures. His lectures were mostly about awakening one's soul. He wanted everyone to discover their own self without being influenced by others. Once one truly knew himself, then that individual could conquer any obstacle ahead of them. But the thousands of people listening at his lectures would wonder, how does one discover himself? According to Emerson, one should break away from secondhand information or wisdom from the past. Find your own values and beliefs. Don't just accept everything said to you. He believed people in the past had an intimate relationship with God and nature and arrived at their own understanding of the universe. All the basic elements that they require to do so exist at the very moment in time. He quotes, The sun shines today also. There is more wool and flax in the fields. There are new lands, new men, new thoughts. Let us demand our own works and laws and worship. Now, people knew what to do, but to what extent and where? He didn't want people to completely isolate themselves from family and friends. He just wanted to make sure everyone gave themselves free time to think about who they were and what they believed in. And he also didn't want people to ignore all wisdom of the past. We need to keep the obvious truths with us, like hiding underground if a tornado passes and not thinking we can defy the universe and run towards a tornado like nothing will happen. Emerson didn't want people to injure themselves. He wanted us to keep the basics but develop more complex beliefs on our own through exploration of the world around us. Nature was where he thought this should happen. Being alone in the woods for 20 minutes daily or for a couple of days could clear your mind. Without the distractions of the city, people, or technology, we could put our minds at ease. As Emerson said, nature exists to serve man. Overall, Emerson's hundreds of essays changed America. Historian James Adams wrote, In no other author can we get so close to the whole of the American spirit. He embodied the American spirit of individualism and finding your own purpose in life. Emerson's radical ideas gradually became more prevalent. He lived the truth, and his imagination, idealism, and sense of duty made these ideas take root and live on. He believed in people and admired not just the scholar, but servants, fishermen, and teachers, like he did. We should search out new truths, meet in kindness and honesty, respect each other, and know who we are. Now, let's move on to Thoreau. Thoreau was a true man of wisdom. He had similar thoughts to Emerson, because Emerson was his mentor growing up. Their works are not entirely the same, however. They were interested in several different topics. Thoreau, for example, wrote an essay about his thoughts on government, civil disobedience. He felt very strongly about the harm government inflicted upon people. He thought government was more harmful than helpful. Not many people at the time had the confidence to speak so openly about the government. He opens his essay with, That government is best which governs least. 
Government enables a few men to impose their moral will on the majority, whereas people should be making decisions on their own, he thought. He wanted the public to rule itself. He thought a man had an obligation to act upon his conscience, even if his ideas were against the majority opinion. His radical ideas about government truly inspired many people. He influenced big names like Gandhi and Martin Luther King. These two important historic figures would not have done many things if it weren't for Thoreau's writings. Gandhi used Thoreau's writings on abolishing slavery to help him with his movement in India, and most importantly, used Thoreau's civil disobedience. He said the essay contained the essence of his political philosophy not only in India's struggle against the British, but as his own views on the relation of citizens to the government. Martin Luther King credited Thoreau in giving him his first experience at nonviolent protest. King led all of his protests nonviolently and urged everyone around him to be the same. Without Thoreau, the civil rights movement would have resulted in a completely different way. Because of Thoreau, Gandhi and MLK became one of the most influential civil leaders in the world. Thoreau also had the belief of living simply without the need of many material goods. Technology was advancing at that time, and the Industrial Revolution was about to begin. The people around him always wanted more, in order to make their life simpler. But Thoreau thought we only needed the basic necessities. When living in Walden Pond for two years, he truly discovered what living simply was like. He would fish in the pond and sleep in a small cozy cabin. He would invite his family and friends over to show them the beauty around him. He didn't want people to spend their lives on machines. He wanted people to stop and enjoy what was around them and what is beyond them. He wanted us to live and transcend our current world, to discover as much as we can about ourselves because that was the first step to happiness. Thoreau taught people to do rather than say. Don't say you will do something, just do it. Show people you really mean it. He was more radical than Emerson in that he acted out many of his beliefs to the extreme, like not paying the government tax on an issue he didn't support and living in the woods of Massachusetts for two years. However, they both lived out their beliefs to the best of their abilities. Thoreau's works also embody the spirit of American individualism and encouraged people to fight for injustice. He inspired millions to act and is still inspiring more and more people as his essays are being read today. All in all, Emerson and Thoreau will always be remembered for the beliefs they have contributed to the world. Their strong essays show thousands that you can be who you want to be. They made transcendentalism a true and passionate movement that influenced people around the world. History would truly be lacking without them. As Thoreau said, If a man does not keep pace with his companions, perhaps it is because he hears a different drummer. This statement sums up the transcendentalism movement in such a simple and beautiful way. Without these two important people, the transcendentalist movement would have never been born, and life in America would be completely different because every person impacts millions of things in their lives. And fortunately, Emerson and Thoreau impacted us positively.